Hey guys, welcome back to Tabletop Robotics. I'm Justin. Today I'm going to show you how to make these 3D printed ball bearings using embedded balls. Okay, let's get started. So when it comes to 3D printed bearings, you essentially have three options. You have the first option where you print the bearing all in one piece, balls included. This has the disadvantage that the balls are not going to be accurate enough, most likely are not going to be accurate enough to actually work with a low-end 3D printer or FDM 3D printer mainly, uh, mainly. So the next two options are either to have steel ball bearings, but have it so it's two pieces clamping the ball bearings together. Now this works just fine, um, but you have the problem of assembly and a lot of the times it's hard to get those balls in the correct place. So the third option you usually have is all in one, so print all at the same time, and this is more like a roller bearing, not really a ball bearing. We have rollers around. Uh, this is probably better for FDM than the first one I showed you with the balls. But again, you you still have plastic on plastic, not really the best. So what I want to do is change this up a little bit, but I am going to print the casing of the ball bearings on the 3D printer. But halfway through the printer, I'm going to stop it halfway through and put steel ball bearings and instead of ball bearings I'm actually going to use BBs so steel BBs. I'm going to embed them into the 3D print and let it finish afterwards so I have the ball bearings encased in the 3D print itself making it all one piece so it's probably more robust and should work a lot better than the fully 3D printed ball bearings. So now I'll show you how I modeled this then I'll meet you back in Cura where I had to change a couple settings so it works better. Okay, so here we are in Ultimaker Cure. I uploaded the model. Two things we need to do to make sure this print works well. So first thing we're gonna have to do is change the options. So we turn on Z hop when, it, uh, when retracted, I'm gonna turn that on. And then we're also gonna do is the Z hop height. We're gonna increase this to a large number. Now this is because when the print goes in between the two parts, it has to jump over the bearing. I'll slice it one more time so you can see. So we need a big Z hop height is because that when it gets to this point, when the balls are in place, the print bed has to jump, sorry, the print head has to jump over the balls itself. So when it's done doing the outer layer, it has to go up, move over into the inside, and then come back down. So it clears the balls in the inside. Another thing we're gonna have to do to make sure this works properly, and this is not necessary, but we're gonna have to go into modify G-code and we're gonna to have to add a script. Let me take that off, add a script, and we're gonna pause at height. Now in this pause at height, we're gonna change height to layer number. Now there's 48 layer numbers. I'm gonna pause halfway through because that's where the balls are. Uh, oh, uh, so 24. We're gonna punk the print head somewhere, it doesn't really matter where. Uh, retraction, we're gonna put zero. Retraction speed, it's zero, so it doesn't matter. Extrusion amount. Uh, zero we're not switching anything so that can be zero extrusion speed zero then redo layers we're going to set this to one this is just better adhesion when the two layers come back together when the print head restarts and in standby temperature that can be zero okay we're going to close that i'm going to slice one more time now you didn't have to modify the g code if you really wanted to on the specific layer you could just stop your print then resume that's an option on a lot of 3D printers. You might, if you don't have that option, you can always modify the G-code. Okay, let's go to the printer. Okay, so here's the bearing getting printed. Right now, overall, it took about 22 minutes of print time, not including the time it took to stop. Um, this weird video quality i have no idea what happened it just happened with the software i was using i'll fix that next time sorry guys about that um so halfway through the print the print stopped um i put 14 balls in then i continued the print everything after that went perfectly fine there wasn't any real problem 
a little bit of filament got stuck to the print bit, uh, so I did the nozzle, as you can see there, but it didn't affect the print at all. Um, I'm quite happy with the results. This is my second attempt printing. My first attempt did have a little bit of too much tolerance, so it was a little bit loose, but the second one went perfectly fine. Uh, it's pretty tight now. Speaking of results, let's look at those. So here are the finished bearings. As you can see, here's my first attempt. It's a little loose, as you can see in the middle. The second one's much better. There's much more balls too. They spin pretty well, both of them. This one has a little, since it's a little loose, it gets caught up a little bit, but this one works perfectly fine. So, uh, yeah, I don't know any more stuff to talk about this. Um, I am using uh, steel ball BBs. They're about 4.6 millimeters in diameter. They work pretty well. I might have to get real ball bearings eventually. I don't know. But, yeah. Now, if you want the files for this uh, bearing the in the link below There's also a link to a place where you can get the free CAD file and in the free CAD file You can make your own bearing so there's a spreadsheet set up so you can put in your own dimensions and it will output the correct bearing size that you'll probably want Okay, that's the end of this video guys. Thanks for watching if you liked it give it a thumbs up consider subscribing Check out the other videos on this channel. I'll see you next time. Bye